So the temperature's what, gone up about four degrees since we were on the air, I think, at uh, seven o'clock. So of course it's time to talk about snow cones. <laughs> Dozens of racers are gonna head to Chula Vista for the Snow Cone 5K. 10 News is Laura Acevedo joins us from the marina. Laura, any sign of the snow cones yet? Yeah, well, there actually is a sign of a snow cone, and I want to show it to you. I have it right here. I actually made this myself. I Well, I put the flavors on it myself. It's really cold. I haven't even tried it. Um, I'm going to have uh, Joanne hold it for me here. These guys are actually waiting for me to start them off. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start them off, and then I'm going to tell you what this is all about. Ready? In three, two, one, go! Yeah. So they are off, and while we wait, or while they're running, I want to tell you what this is all about. So Joanne, tell me a little bit. Prime Motivation, what are you guys raising money for? So Prime Motivation is a nonprofit organization here in the South Bay, and we're um, providing scholarships for our young people so that um, once they start a college, there's usually a scholarship for freshmen, but to sustain yourself afterwards, so that's where we try to come in with the scholarship to help with the books or any additional expenses but we have um, again this is a family fun event um, we have all ages out here I think our youngest might be even five years old um, all the way up to our seasoned seniors um, AARP has a contingency here we have also a pet pets they were um, <laughs> um, part, participating in the run so it's a great um, inaugural event here at J Street Marina North and and all to benefit Prime Motivation a nonprofit here in the South Bay perfect thank you so much for joining us this morning and so the reason it's called the snow cone run is because after they're done doing the 5k they get this snow cone a little secret I didn't have to run to get this so just wanted to show it to you guys I made it I'm probably gonna give it to Gerald because it's really cold and I don't think I I want to be more cold than I already am so we're gonna stay here we're gonna stick around and check in with the people as they start getting their snow cones at the finish line reporting live in Chula Vista Laura Acevedo 10 news all right, Laura, thank you. That's my kind of uh, 5K right there. Elite runners taking off the guy holding the dog, I think, right, was maybe that was my fun. favorite. Now, the so, woman she was interviewing, did you notice it was like she was doing a Facebook Live the whole time or I something, wonder holding she was. the uh, I'm cell gonna phone? I'm going to go check online. Yeah. That's funny. All right, thanks to Laura. We'll check in shortly. And uh, we may be headed for another drought here in California. The county's already taking steps to prepare. I'll tell you about the changes to your water use that you may see coming in the near future. Big recall from Toyota and Hyundai on more than 100,000 trucks and SUVs. We'll explain the dangers the vehicles pose to drivers. I want to tell you about a recall alert. Toyota and Hyundai have recalled more than 100,000 trucks and SUVs. Toyota says the electronic stability control systems can shut down unexpectedly in their 2018 Tundras and Sequoias. Hyundai warns the steering wheel of its 2018 Santa Fe SUVs can come off. Both companies will let owners know next month that their vehicles are affected and they will do the repairs for free. Here we go again in California, possibly heading into another drought this winter, the third driest on record, and state water officials are preparing for the worst. 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena looks at how we are doing here in San Diego County. This is the map released by the U.S. Drought Monitor just last week. 46% of the state, all of it here in Southern California, back in a severe drought. But Bob Yamada with the San Diego County Water Authority says it's important to remember. We could be entering into another weather related drought, but from a water supply perspective, we're fine. Just fine, he says, because people like him plan for dry years. We're in a, a position right now where we do not see any water shortages in the foreseeable future. And that is a result of investments that we've made in water supply reliability this region has made over the last close to three decades. According to Yamada, San Diegans have become pretty good at conservation over the years. He also says our region continues to find ways to generate more of our own water. We've added more groundwater that we desalinate. We've added more recycled water. There's more yet to come in that area. And of course, a couple of years ago, we added the new Carlsbad desalination plant. In the meantime, the State Water Resources Board could soon put strict drought conservation rules in place permanently. Things like no excessive lawn watering, using a special nozzle to wash your car, and hotels asking guests before washing towels and sheets. 
All things Yamada thinks are worth doing come rain Absolutely. or shine. When I say that we're fine, it doesn't mean that we can return to the wasteful habits of the past. We need to continue to be efficient with our water use. Lindsay Pena, 10 News. State Water Resources Board is expected to vote in April. If passed, the restrictions would go into effect in July. Now to a Team 10 consumer alert. The FBI is warning people to watch out for fake emails asking for W-2 information. This tax time warning comes as cyber criminals are targeting businesses in hopes of striking data theft gold mines. You're not the only one waiting for your W-2. Criminals are too. The information on a W-2 form is very valuable. Uh, whether they want to exploit it themselves or they want to sell that data on the black market. Team 10 spoke to cybersecurity expert Stephen Cobb with ESET. Phishing emails are making the rounds. The most popular version impersonates an executive within the company with a spoofed email address. The response they're looking for is an employee to take an action, not a, a click online, but to actually go and get those W-2s uh, as a PDF and email them to somebody. Cobb says if the email looks fishy, employees need to question where it came from before they do anything. It should be company policy that nobody gets to send out either wire transfers or W-2 information without getting confirmation from a manager. Yeah, check and double check before you click anything. For more information on how to protect yourself, head to our website, 10 Mary? All right, Melissa, thank you. 10 News now looking ahead to some of the big events happening this week in San Diego. Jury selection will start tomorrow for the civil trial in Rebecca Zahau's death. She was found bound, gagged, and hanging from the Spreckles Mansion in Coronado back in July of 2011. Authorities ruled it a suicide, but now Zahau family attorneys are naming her boyfriend's brother, Adam Shacknai, in the wrongful death suit. Another gas tax hike may be on its way if the state passes it on Tuesday. The State Board of Equalization will vote to adjust the gas tax based on projections of price and consumption. And if the vote passes, San Diegans would pay about 75 cents per gallon of gas in taxes alone. If it passes, we would see that hike kick in in July. <sighs> Thanks. Yeah, sorry. Appreciate it. Hate to be the bearer uh, of bad news. Let's uh, get another check on the weather with Melissa. How are we looking? Well, I'll be the bearer of good news. The good news here is that today is going to be pretty nice. We're taking a live look here from La Jolla Shores, a camera from the Marine Room. Mostly clear skies, although temperatures along the coast, it's still pretty cool. We're in the lower 50s at 819 in the morning. Our weather headlines here as we prepare you for your weekend and get ready for the next work week. So warmer today compared to yesterday by a few degrees and then come Monday it's going to be cooler with a chance of rain Monday night and then snow chances in our mountains. Our forecast highs for today. We're going to be in the mid 60s along the coast as well as the deserts 67 in our inland valleys and cool up in the mountains. We're talking 48 degrees Jim and Mary. Thank you, Mal. All right, roughly 70% of people who are blind are unemployed. The San Diego based company is looking to change that. How it hopes to use a special set of glasses to help thousands of people find jobs. And later, two women robbed at gunpoint fight back, and you'll see it in this dramatic new video, and we'll also hear from them as they recall this terrifying experience. Local company wants to fill the gap of high unemployment among the blind and visually impaired. While the majority have college degrees, 70% are unemployed. 10 News reporter Amanda Brandeis explains their plan to address the problem. Juan Hernandez has never doubted his capabilities, but because he's totally blind, potential employers have. Despite my education, my degrees, my background, you know, and proving what I know, you know, there have been times where I've been told, well, you're blind, so you can't do this. Hernandez was born with an eye disease and lost his vision at age 16. While job rejection was painful, his confidence never wavered. He was determined to become a software engineer. I just figured, you know, it's their loss. And I moved on and went on, went on to other things. Like his current job at IRA, an assistive technology service helping the blind and visually impaired. Thank you for calling IRA. This is Peter. How may I help you? With the help of smart glasses equipped with a camera, clients are connected to human agents who can provide on-demand assistance, like reading your mail or navigating through a grocery store. IRA makes things a lot faster, more efficient. Now IRA wants to use their technology to help people get jobs. We will provide unlimited access to job-seeking tasks 
uh, whenever and wherever. Launching the IRA application. At no cost, job seekers can use IRA to help with job applications, resumes, and public transportation. Fundamentally, Founder Suman Kanuganti believes right. many employers aren't aware of the staggering unemployment numbers. He hopes to bring the number from 70 percent to under 7 percent. Besides the ignorance of not knowing what a blind person is capable of doing, it's the accommodation aspect is the other fear. And IRA can really help bridge a lot of that. By removing barriers, IRA hopes companies will see an opportunity. Blind and visually impaired workers ready to put their vast skills and talents to work. Amanda Brandeis, 10 News. IRA, San Diego company, will be making the employment program available to everyone in the country. Another chilly day in San Diego, but the cold is not going to stop the fun. Here's 10 News anchor Renee Nelson with Exploring San Diego. San Diego is hosting a two-day Chinese New Year celebration with traditional Chinese performances and dances, martial arts, lion dances, and more than 50 food and commercial booths. There is still time to join in on the celebration. The family-friendly event runs Sunday at 3rd Avenue and J Street, and it's free. Well, Camp Shred returns to Cardiff by the Beach with music, entertainment, food trucks, and all things surfing. Proceeds from the event's beer garden, those go to benefit California State Parks. The event takes place at San Aleo's campground, and it's free. Well, lace up and enjoy a snow cone this weekend in Chula Vista at the Snow Cone 5K, benefiting Prime Motivation. That's a nonprofit that works to help children to stay in school. It's at J Street Marina and costs between $15 and $35. And for more information on these and other events in your area, you can always go to 10news.com. Click on Community Events under the Lifestyle section. Renee Nelson, 10 News. Renee, thank you. Straight ahead on 10 News, President Trump weighing in overnight on the Democrats' rebuttal memo. It looks to discredit the GOP note point by point, but Republicans say it does the opposite. You're watching 10 News this morning. Right now on 10 News this morning, we now know the identity of the Navy sailor killed in a tragic accident at Camp Pendleton. The Navy still investigating the accident this morning. A woman talking only to 10 News about a frightening encounter with an aggressive man in Balboa Park. And enjoy your Sunday with mostly sunny skies because changes are on the way. I'll show you when we could see rain start to fall in your neighborhood. 10 News This Morning starts right now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Good Sunday morning to you. Great to have you here. I'm Jim Patton. I'm Mary McKenzie. Let's turn it right over to Melissa Messiha with those changes. we got to get to you with that kind of a tease. I know. Well, today is going to be dry, and then by tomorrow, our evening hours, that's when we could Stunning. start to see some of that rain. I know. Mary's covering in front of half a palm of tree. The, uh, <laughs> the palm tree. But yeah, we took it up full here, so you can see the sunny sky, some of the surfers there already enjoying the waters. Right now, it's uh, 50s there along our coastline, and it's still pretty chilly in some areas across the County, like the inland valleys, upper 30s right now. The mountains right at 40 and the deserts about 48 degrees currently at 830 in the morning. So hour by hour along the coast, we're going to reach the mid 60s again, mostly sunny today. And then our inland valleys, you're going to top out at around 67 degrees. When I return, we'll activate our rain future cast. Also show you your seven day Mary. All right, Melissa, thank you. Some new developments this morning. We now know the identity of the Navy sailor who was killed in an accident at Camp Pendleton. The Navy says Lieutenant James E. Mazzicelli was hit by a spinning helicopter blade on Wednesday. He was taken to the hospital but died yesterday morning. Mazzicelli was a 32-year-old flight surgeon assigned, assigned to Marine Light Attack Helicopter Squadron. The Navy's investigating how this accident happened. New this morning, a bicyclist suffering serious injuries after being hit by a car in Imperial Beach. It happened yesterday evening on 4th Street and Palm Avenue. Sheriff's deputies say three people were riding their bikes when a car making a left turn hit one of the riders. She was taken to the hospital, as we said, with serious injuries, though her current condition is not known this morning. Driver stayed on scene and was cooperating with the investigation. Deputies say drugs and alcohol were not factors in the crash. The Democrats are finally releasing their memo on the Russia Pro, a rebuttal to the controversial Republican memo that came out a few weeks ago that alleged the FBI abused its powers in the Russia investigation. ABC's David Wright has the president's reaction. 
This is the memo in the middle of this fight, the Democrats' point-by-point -point rebuttal of another Republican memo released weeks ago. Subject line, correcting the record, the Russia investigations. As it says right there on the bottom, top secret until now, when the Republicans finally got around to declassifying it. President Trump wasted no time declaring the new memo a total political and legal bust on Twitter, dissing it on Fox well, News, did, too. You see that the memo was a nothing. That's a very bad document for their side. Congressman Devin Nunez, who wrote the original Republican memo accusing FBI investigators of abusing their powers to spy on candidate Trump, told conservative activists this weekend he wanted this Democratic response out weeks ago when the White House released his memo. We want it out because we think it is clear evidence that the Democrats are not only trying to cover this up, but they're also colluding with parts of the government to help cover this up. The author of the new memo, Democrat Adam Schiff, doesn't buy that. If the president really thought that this Democratic memo was a bust, he wouldn't have tried to conceal it as long as he did, and he wouldn't be releasing it on a Saturday morning. Uh, and he wouldn't be going on Fox today to try to rebut it. Schiff's memo insists the FBI and the Department of Justice did not justify early wiretap warrants in the Russia investigation solely on the so-called dodgy dossier compiled by former British spy Christopher Steele and paid for by the Clinton campaign. The Schiff memo insists DOJ provided additional information obtained by multiple independent sources that corroborate Steele's reporting, but whatever that evidence might have been is now blacked out, censored by the Trump White House, which insists releasing the details would compromise national security. While we would have uh, preferred fewer redactions, I think what they proposed was reasonable, um, but I think that doesn't uh, obscure the fact that the White House uh, attempted to suppress this memo. That was ABC's David Wright reporting. And take a look at this. Still no word on what caused this car to burst into flames on the side of the freeway. This was in Chula Vista, leading to this traffic slowdown. This was just before 8 a.m. yesterday on the 805 North near the Palomar Street on-ramp. The front of the car was completely up in flames, as you could see there. The driver was able to make it out, though, without any injuries. Two fire engines were called. They put it out, and traffic was backed up for about an hour. I heard him say, I mean, now! And he took his stick and swung it. Yeah, frightening run-in with an aggressive man he has this woman on edge. She says that this man in this photo chased her out of Balboa Park earlier this week. It is a story you'll only see on 10 News. Reporter Hannah Mullins explains she is not backing down. He's very angry and very agitated and very unsettled. Monica Parks was walking her dogs before sunset just like she always does, but she suddenly sent someone right behind her. I just saw a person out of the corner of my eye, so I leaned down to pull my dogs in a little closer, and then I hear, get the out of my canyon. My first thought was just go. She says her gut reaction was to run, so she darted for the fence. And then I heard this crack, and it was, I said now. So we got over here. She says when she got on this side of the gate, she stopped running and stood her ground. And that's when I got mad. That's when I felt really indignant. I thought, how dare you tell me to get out of your canyon? We can all share this canyon. She didn't say anything, but she stood still and stared at him. <sighs> and he kept looking back over and shouting more obscenities, just spewing some of the most foul words I've ever heard. Her dogs weren't much help. She rescued Malia, who's the bigger of the two, after someone broke her jaw. But she did think to snap this photo. She only saw a flash of his face, but she won't forget it. It was scary. His face was scary. It was either dirty or very dark and wrinkled. She says he's gone after several other neighbors. Right then, another guy came up and said he did the same thing to me. It all unfolded by the Boy Scouts of America, the Girl Scouts, and a middle school. On the north side of the school, there was a, a clothes repository. The homeless would come there and knock it over and change their wardrobes. Mike Touch says he's recently seen a spike in homeless people cutting through the canyon. Okay, kids. She called the cops because she's worried what he'll do next. But once her fear faded, her compassion kicked in. Maybe if he just had a chance to get some help, he would see that life doesn't have to be spent the way he's spending his life. Hannah Mullins, 10 News. 
All right, I want you to see this video. It shows two women fighting back against an armed robber. This is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Some of it's a little graphic. Security footage is what this is from a family business, a liquor store. Shows the man initially pointing a shotgun at the clerk. She opens the register, but when he turns away, the woman and her mother grab their guns. You see they start shooting. They hit the man several times, but he keeps fighting. He ends up grabbing the mom's gun there and hits her with it. Eventually, though, he collapsed. The mother and daughter talked to GMA this morning about this terrifying encounter. Until you have a gun waved at you and until you see or you don't know what you're feeling or thinking, mm -hmm. you know, looking it's at so my fast. mom's face. I mean, that it happened so fast, but it seemed like it lasted for so long. The man was taken to the hospital in critical condition, and police believe he's connected to at least 10 other robberies in that area. Well, there's now an easier way for San Diegans who take public transit to get around. New Freeway Transit Center just opened in City Heights at University Avenue and El Cajon Boulevard. Community held an unveiling celebration yesterday. The Freeway Transit Center is the region's first freeway-level transit station connecting bus routes to the 15. Another rapid transit center is currently under construction in the South Bay. Weather rate certified San Diego's most accurate forecast. This is 10 News Pinpoint Weather. So, changes on the way. We've yes. been looking at flooding earlier this hour. We're going to get a little rain. We still need it so badly. Are we oh, good? yeah. We definitely need a lot more than what we are going okay. to get. Today is going to be dry. Enjoy the temperatures outdoors. Although right now it's still pretty chilly in some areas like Ramona still in the upper 30s. Julian at 40 degrees. Places like Kearney Mesa, Poway, Escondido still haven't crawled out of the 40s. Along our coastline right now we are in the lower 50s. But this is a beautiful shot if you do plan to head to the coast. Mission Bay, mostly sunny skies today. But again, things are going to change because we do have this low pressure system here making its way on south. So come Monday, things are going going to be cooler. We're going to feel those onshore uh, winds as well as the possibility of showers come late Monday into Tuesday. Our rain future cast here showing you that most of Monday is going to be dry until we get into our evening hours. So later on in the evening, that's when we could start to see some of those scattered showers. Again, you can see most of the county does have the possibility of getting hit with some rain and snow there in our mountains. Seven day chance of rain showing that we do have the best shot here on Tuesday. It dips down Wednesday and Thursday and then increases again come Friday and Saturday. So into our next weekend. So uh, some unstable weather here. Just be prepared for the chance of rain over the next several days. For today, our forecast highs, we're going to be in the 60s here along our coastline, mid 60s in the North County coast. We're looking at the mid to upper 60s in our inland valleys, Escondido 67, Poway around 66. Quick check of our seven day forecast here. So our temperature is going to cool again on Monday and then cool again on Tuesday. So just be prepared for the 50s and the lower 60s. Inland Valley still pretty cold overnight, upper 30s there. The mountains chilly and breezy. The deserts, the mid 60s for today. All right. Well, hope we get some rain. Hopefully we yes. do. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Bill. With these chilly temperatures, nothing sounds better than a snow cone. Maybe <laughs> dozens of racers they are in Chula Vista for the inaugural Snow Cone 5K. Yeah, Ted News is Laura Acevedo joins us from the marina. Laura, how's the event going thus far? Good morning. Yeah, well, the runners are still out. They haven't returned yet. We had a couple come through, um, but I do know how the snow cone is. I said I wasn't going to eat it, but I did. It's almost <laughs> totally gone. But let me tell you about this snow cone 5K. The runners are coming in very slowly, but they are. We had a couple come through, and then I want to show you what they're going to get uh, when they are all done. It's that snow cone that I had, but this is where they're getting it. This is actually um, a little snow cone truck, and they're going to get the ice um, in a cup, and then they have the opportunity to pick their own flavors. Now this is all for a very good cause. This is for raising money for a nonprofit called Prime Motivation. Now that nonprofit raises money for children uh, and education. It gives them scholarships, helps them with their books, with other expenses in college. And if you take a look, there are some runners that are coming through the finish line right now. So all of their registration fees went to help this organization. Once those runners have caught their breath, they're going to come over to where we are and get those snow cones. So again, this is all for a very, very good cause. Now, Kona Ice, I was actually talking to them and they actually do fundraising events like this. And so they provide their services so people can get 
um, their snow cones right after the races. So it sounds pretty good. We're going to talk to some of these runners as they come over to get their snow cones. But again, all for a very good cause. Reporting live in Chula Vista, Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Laura, thanks. She broke down. She had to eat the snow cone. How could you not? Yeah, really. <laughs> too enticing. Mm -hmm. A big star in San Diego will tell you the heartfelt reason the Big Bang Theory actress Kaylee Cuoco came to town. A new type of private investigator in San Diego scouring sites like Airbnb. Team 10 uncovering the new risk for those using the short-term rental sites. A TV star making a visit to San Diego, the star of the Big Bang Theory, Kaylee Cuoco, and her fiance, they stopped by the county animal shelter on Gaines Street last weekend, and they went